Mr. Moderator, fellow panelists, friends, a very good evening to all of you. At the very outset, I'd like to thank the Scientific Committee of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium for inviting me to give this talk on the role of artificial intelligence in breast imaging. In a recently published white paper by the NHS in UK, they outline <clears throat> an ambitious plan which outlines the 10 areas in medicine where AI may have a significant contribution. My talk today will be touching on just two of these aspects, medical imaging and cancer diagnosis. More specifically, breast cancer diagnosis. AI is a branch of computer science that is dedicated to the development of computer algorithms that mimic human thinking. It interprets external data, learns from the data, achieves specific goals and tasks through flexible adaptation. Deep learning is the subfield that relies on neural networks with multiple layers that can extract higher level features and better decode image data, much like the human brain. Actually, there is a competition for software professionals where they compete for algorithms that detect objects and classify images from among thousands of samples. This competition is called the ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge. As you can see from the slide, the algorithm would be expected to classify common objects in different settings. That would be similar to identifying an abnormality on a mammogram. <clears throat> As you can see in this slide given to me by my friend, Dr. Greg Sorensen, the top five error rate percentages dropped from around 30% to around 15% in 2012 as we transitioned from the handcrafted computer vision approaches to deep learning models. There has been a steady decline in the error rates ever since. In fact, around 2015, 2016, it outperformed the humans. And to outline the role of AI in a nutshell, spectacular advances in deep learning is the main reason for improved image analysis. These advances could easily be applied to cancer imaging particularly in a screen setting, such as screening mammograms or lung nodule identification and lung cancer screening. What has made all of this possible? Advances in deep learning has made possible due to the following reason. The ability to collect more data, process them faster, the availability of graphic processing units, decreasing cost of computer software, and the accessibility to ready-made complex networks that one does not have to start from scratch each time. Convoluted neural networks, the architecture for deep learning models in simple terms, essentially consists of an input layer, an output layer, and hidden layers in between. The same is illustrated in greater detail in the image on the left. The more multi-tiered the hidden layer, the more complex tasks it can perform. And this architecture is scalable to massive data sets, can learn and self-correct along the way, very much like the human brain. Breast imaging lends itself very well to the tools of artificial intelligence, as demonstrated in this article by Dr. Hickman et al. At one end of the spectrum, you have the broad AI that takes care of administrative and organizational tasks. At the other end is the narrow AI that covers detection, diagnosis, triaging, risk prediction, treatment re response, with the ultimate goal of improving patient outcomes. Needless to say, at a time when we are confronted with increasing volume, staffing shortages, and issues of burnout, these are all the areas, as outlined in the slide, where AI could add value. 
In short, minimize harm and maximize benefit. Some of the current challenges in AI implementation are listed on the slide. I will talk about adversarial interventions and bias in the subsequent slides. Black box refers to the non-explainability of how and why the model interprets the image in a particular way. Unlike the rational reasoning humans can provide while arriving at a conclusion. Distribution shift refers to the fact that training data procured from one region may not work well in a different geographic location. For example, the peak age of occurrence of breast cancer in India is a decade earlier when compared with the United States. So a model trained on images from Massachusetts from women in their 50s and 60s will likely not be accurate in younger women in their 40s in Delhi, India. There are obvious differences in demographics, body habitus, diet, and environment. Reporting accuracy would obviously depend on how the data is collected and trained. As an example, data trained mostly on low-grade tumors in non-dense breast may not transfer accurately to high-grade tumors in dense breast. Specific to breast imaging, the physics of image acquisition is different from one vendor to another. So AI trained on image analysis with one vendor may not reproduce the same results with another vendor. Bias is inherent both for humans and AI models. For example, in this image, the AI only recognized the image on the left as a bride, since AI was trained on American brides with a whale and tiara. It classified the Indian bride on the right as a dancer. Bias at the time of training in terms of case selection, ethnic representation will only aggravate when applied to a testing set. These images published in an article in Nature reveal the brittleness of the AI system. Placing some horizontal stickers on the stop sign can fool the AI to read it as speed limit 45. Just imagine the consequences if a self-driving car approaches the stop sign at a busy intersection, misinterprets the sign. Obviously, the result would be a lot of chaos. Likewise, rotating an object confuses the network. It can misclassify the stop sign as a dumbbell or as a racket in this instance. Even natural images, like a dragonfly, may be misclassified as a manhole cover or a mushroom as a pretzel, based on the picture texture and color rather than the salient features a human eye could recognize. Tricking or doctoring the image, also called adversarial attacks, by repeated rotations, change the diagnosis of this benign nevus to malignant. In the next few slides, I'll share our experience of a retrospective study we conducted in partnership with the local AI software vendor. We published the results of a study in Nature this year. I would also briefly dwell on other applications of AI in other aspects of breast imaging. The purpose of our study was twofold. In a reader study setting, how does the performance of an AI software algorithm compare to expert breast images? The second question that we had was, is the combined performance of humans and AI superior to the standalone performance of either. Some of the challenges our vendor encountered in the course of training the algorithm were, many of the screens they obtained for training had a cancer, no cancer, or so-called weak label. The exact location, a strong label, was difficult to obtain retrospectively. While weakly labeled data can learn spurious correlations, strongly labeled data limits the amount of data that
that can be used for training. The three stages of development of the software were as under. In stage one of training, the images were cropped into small patches. The normal patches represented as zero, and the ones with the malignant lesion is one. In the second stage, the software places a bounding box around the malignant lesion. And in stage three, it uses all data to improve performance and provide a risk score for the image. In this digital breast thermosynthesis images, the most suspicious regions at each location were identified, then collapsed and merged using additional image processing techniques in an optimized 2D synthetic view. The vendor refers to this as the D-view. <clears throat> in this first example, there is a malignant mass that can be identified in the D-view on the right. This mass is nearly invisible in the default synthetic view. The final classification of the model also gave it a much higher malignancy score. Another instance where the malignancy is better shown in the D view. Specifically, the speculations are well demonstrated, not so well seen in the default view due to overlapping breast tissue. In order to compare our model's performance directly to expert human readers, we conducted a study where experts and our AI model interpreted the same set of images independently. The study included screening full-field digital mammographic studies where positive cancer status was confirmed by pathology and negative status was confirmed by a subsequent negative exam in the following years. The study set consisted of 131 index cancers age and density match with 154 negative examinations. Out of the 131 index cancers, we had their pre-index images in 120 of them. So after a washout period of four to six weeks, these 120 pre-index cancers were evaluated along with 125 age and density matched negative screening mammograms. The readers were full five full-time breast images who on an average read about 7,000 mammograms a year. Their experience varied from two to 15 years with an average of 5.6 years. For each case, apart from assigning a BIRAT score, the readers also gave a probability, a, a probability of malignancy score to each lesion. In the study, the model outperformed all five radiologists as can be seen in this ROC curve. Their sensitivities and specificities are shown in this chart on the right. In short, on average, the sensitivity improved 14%, specificity 21%, and the study was statistically significant. While the AI performance compared to the readers was statistically significant, the combined reader and AI performance <clears throat> was not very different from the standalone AI model for five, four of the five readers. These are some examples from a series where a pre-index case was identified by one of five radiologists, but not the AI model. The index case was picked up by all the five radiologists. Another case from our series. In the left, none of the pre-index cases was identified by the radiologist, but the index cases were identified by all radiologists and the AI model. Another instance where both the pre-index was not identified by any radiologist, 
and one of the five radiologists identified the cancer on the index case. The AI had picked up both these instances. Another index, uh, another case again where the pre-index lesion was not picked up by the radiologist, but picked up by the AI. So, both for the index and the pre-index cases, the model outperformed fellowship-trained breast images. The ROC for the model is shown in red and for the individual radiologist in different colors. So a study concluded that the AI model exhibited higher performance than five out of five breast imaging specialists in a reader study using full field digital mammogram exams. Despite the model's higher standalone performance, the highest performance was achieved when using a weighted combination of the human and the model scores. The increase in combined performance was not statistically significant, but points to the potential of artificial intelligence plus human performance exceeding either alone. In another study by McKinney et al. and published in Nature, they had similar results with the AI model outperforming six radiologists, though only two of them were fellowship trained. This model was trained in UK, but performed well in a test setting in the United States. They also observed that the model, while superior to the first radiologist read in UK, was non-inferior to the second reader and had the potential to reduce 88% of the second reader's time in UK. Here are some of the other applications of AI in breast care. Triaging screens, objective assessment of breast density, avoiding unnecessary surgery in some high-risk lesions, and predicting breast cancer risk. Let's see one by one. Reading a screening mammogram is a challenging task. The findings are small and subtle, the volumes to be read high, resulting in cognitive and perceptive errors. An algorithm that could sort the list would be a big help to the radiologist. This would help the mammographer focus on the studies more likely to be abnormal, thus improving turnaround time and reducing patient anxiety. In short, it will help us to work smarter not necessarily harder. There are a couple of FDA-approved products. Most of them work on the same principle. How does the AI software work? As was briefly discussed before, the concept of weak and strong labels in training the algorithm. It analyzes the incoming screening study and returns a code or a score, indicating the level of suspicion the software can also generate a preview image by placing a bounding box or a heat map and assigning a lesion score to the suspected finding. The software can thus act as a sorter, a reader aid, a first or a second reader, depending on the roles we assign to the software. The software can also be tailored to the division's specific needs. In a high specificity situation, it prioritizes a small number of cases that have the highest likelihood of malignancy, let's say about 5% of all screening examinations. In a high sensitivity situation, it will identify a larger pool of abnormal mammograms so that approximately 95% of all malignancies are identified. On average, we expect that to account for about 20 to 30% of all screens, or one could take a balanced approach between the two above options. Another potential use being explored is, let the computer opine on the large pile of most likely Bioratz 1 and 2 cases, freeing up the radiologist's time on more relevant patient interactions. Breast density is an important risk factor for breast cancer. 38 of the 50 U.S. states have mandated the breast density informed law that all of us are familiar with. 
The fact that breast cancers are missed in dense breasts generates a lot of patient anxiety and also calls for a number of supplemental imaging. But breast density assessment can be varied as Lehman et al. discussed the role of a deep learning, dense, a deep learning model in density assessment. There are four categories of breast density as outlined in the Biorats Atlas, from essentially fatty to extremely dense. The fatty and the scattered fibroglandular are called the non-dense breast. The heterogeneously dense and the extremely dense are referred to as the dense breast. Approximately 40 to 50% of eligible US women have dense breast. This assessment is reader dependent and very subjective. In this paper, Lehman et al. talk about variations even amongst the two objective commercially available softwares, Volpara and Quantra. In collaboration with researchers at MIT, they established a deep learning model that they have been routinely using at the Mass General Hospital and have observed excellent concordance with expert readers. In this very interesting manuscript, Ball et al discuss the role of machine learning models in predicting upgrade, its usefulness, and avoiding unnecessary surgery, the role of AI in clinical decision support. In this slide, I've demonstrated a few of the high-risk lesions. Currently, there's a lack of clear consensus on the appropriate management of many high-risk lesions. High-risk lesions include ADH, ALH, LCIS, FEA, radial scars, IDPs, some of which are shown on the slide. Again, in collaboration with MIT scientists, Ball et al. described the usefulness of the deep learning model they used in predicting upgrade. Based on the retrospective study, the model would have avoided 30% of surgeries in their study of approximately 300 high-risk lesions a huge saving in healthcare dollars. These two publications highlight the role of AI in image interpretation. As mentioned earlier, AI has clearly outperformed human readers. These papers lend credence to that concept. Similar to our observation, Dolblom et al. observed that AI was able to identify cancers in pre-index full-field digital mammograms that the readers missed. In the Malmo breast tomosynthesis screening trial, the paper alluded to in the earlier slide, interestingly enough, 40% of cases, 18 or 41 of them, findings seen only on a digital breast tomosynthesis were correctly identified by AI on a preceding 2D study. This slide just, the, the slide shown here illustrates that point where the architectural distortion is so well seen on the 3D image, but not at all appreciated on the 2D image. This, however, is one of the few papers that notes that the performance of two expert readers exceeded the standalone AI performance. While mammograms are still the best screening tool for detection of breast cancers, Different medical societies have differing guidelines. There is a move to personalize screening based on risk assessment. In this paper by Yala et al., they propose a promising deep learning mammography-based model for improved risk prediction. As per current guidelines, these are the more commonly used risk models. As can be seen on this slide, Tyracusic model version eight is probably the better of the models that are currently being used since it takes into account patient information, breast disease history, and family history. In this paper that used data from Mass General Hospital, Karolinska Institute in Sweden, and the Shang Center from Taiwan, the deep learning model and all its combinations shown in red outperformed the Tyracusic model shown in yellow. The model worked well across different cancer subtypes, races, and breast density. 
what then is the future of AI with respect to breast imaging? So far, most studies have been retrospective with small numbers and cancer-enriched data in a lab setting, unlike the real-world setting where the prevalence of cancer is low. So we need large, prospective worldwide studies to validate the promise AI holds. Equally important would be a need to compare the currently available AI models. We know that training a data set in one population subgroup does not test well at another population subset. The need is for a system that is generalizable and validated across different geographic regions. Since breast parenchymal patterns from each vendor are different based on the physics of image acquisition, AI software trained with one vendor may not be as effective with another. I cannot overstress the need for a compassionate, human-centric approach as opposed to a robotic objective report from a computer. Questions of data ownership, patient confidentiality, and vulnerability to cybercrime are unresolved and makes oversight imperative. In conclusion, in an area of self-driving cars and autopilot and airline transportation, the future of AI is bright. Early results from deep learning and mammography have been spectacular as outlined. Hopefully, current ongoing research can address current challenges. Our hope is AI will be able to address inequity in healthcare quality, reduce human errors, and radiologist burnout. I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of my team members for this presentation. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. And this is the UMass Chan Medical School overlooking Lake Quingsigamon. Thank you very much. <laughs>